Woo! So all of that silly stuff probably went through. But yes, we are streaming. Um, and so I am so, so excited. I've been messing with time all week. Um, what just, have you been doing? Well, you know, since I'm back in college while working, while, you know, helping out with my family and I'm going to cook some dinner every night and all that, um, my agenda has been way overloaded. So I've definitely been like, because, you know, and again, we've talked about this because I'm super dyslexic. It's really hard for me to think in terms of lengthening time, shortening time, because my brain doesn't compute that way. So what I do is I say, I need to accomplish all this work in a very short period of time, or I need to move rapidly through time so I can get to something very quickly, you know, so I think in terms of my action as opposed to the time around me. And that allows me to connect in. And, you know, if, you know, it's the same thing. It just, when I try to do, you know, the techniques you taught us, and then I'm like, and I'm lengthening time, I'm like, so does lengthening time mean I'm riding the time wave? It doesn't mean I'm like, I, I get all confused so nothing. <laughs> happens. So I'm like, okay, well, it's all about getting frequencies in harmony. So um, what was it? Last week uh, in my web design class, we had to design a four-page website using HTML and CSS code on Notepad++. And four pages that are all linked together and formatted with active this and floating images that and all that. It, it's a lot. And so it took me like over 10 hours to do this project. You know, I'm like, I don't have 10 hours. It was very stressful and frustrating to have to do this completely from scratch when we're in a, this is like a 101 type class, you know, <laughs> we're like kicked in the deep end. And then, but that was only part one of the homework. Part two was to do the same thing again only the instructions were, there was like a lot less support, a lot more like creating all the formulas on your own without anything to check them against or the code. And I was like, no, <laughs> I do not have like 15, 20 hours of my week to give to one of the three classes I'm taking while running a business, while being a human being with a family and a home and et cetera, et cetera, you know, and all the other stuff we have to deal with. So the second one I did, I just went into, I made a pocket of time for myself. So I guess I lengthened time and I went into it and I did the entire thing in just over one hour. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was really proud of myself. Now it was a little bit quicker and easier. Like it would not have taken me 15 hours, but when I checked with the, my fellow students, um, I was completely done by yesterday afternoon. And most of them are like nowhere near done. It. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I love so, that one in our favor. Yeah. And what I found was because I'm doing, I'm messing with time while still living cohesively with my family. Um, and my family, like I'm in my room at my desk working, but my family come in and out, they're still doing things. So I found like when I'm working, there's a whole different energy, a different frequency, like I'm in a fully enclosed in a space. When someone comes in, we interact. And then they leave and then I'm just like back in. It was like, almost like, like a doorway to another portal or something that I was very comfortable flowing back and forth in. And I think that comfort was because you taught me this so many years ago and I've been practicing it. So, but, but they weren't affected by it though, right? Their timeline or their time was still normal. It was just yours yeah. though. I'm the only one that was affected. 
but they couldn't believe how much work I got done. It seemed to them like I just went down and said, okay, now I'm going to do this big project. And then they hardly got anything done. And then I came back upstairs, I'm done. And I showed it to them and they were like, so yeah. I've never tried that. I've always, I did the one like when we were in the class with, I brought the whole class with me. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I didn't even think about isolating out, I guess, so to speak, and doing it that way. Okay. So I just have to mention this for people who are watching with us. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Let's see. We don't have any comments yet. Let me make absolutely sure that we're in. Nope. Even. Okay. Thank you, Facebook. It keeps putting me in an audience where only I can see it. So I just put it to public audience. <laughs> only people who are like for the first eight minutes of this, <laughs> only people who come and join us later can see it. So for <laughs> those of you who are joining live now, later Hello. Go, the first eight minutes, it was funny. <laughs> I don't know why Facebook does this to me. I put it for public audience and then, yeah. So hi, everyone. Hello if again. <laughs> if you had trouble finding us, I'm sorry. Facebook did it to us again. <laughs> um, so what you were talking about on the night in class, I just want to mm -hmm. say it from my perspective and then you got to share with us. Um, this was what, like five, 45 years ago. Um, Oh and I still God. had my wellness center. Yeah. And we were sitting in a class. There is a group of us who met regularly. So, and we had for years. So we were all very comfortable with uh, the work that we did together and uh, often supported each other. Like we assisted each other with energetic or metaphysical work. And we had become really attuned to each other. Um, our teacher who was, you know, our leader, who's amazing. Every month we would come together and she would take us through a new like lesson. It was like a master's group meeting led by an ultra master. <laughs> and so we were, um, we, she had taken us on a guided spirit journey. That was really cool. And then afterwards, everyone was doing a share on their experience, but we only had 10 minutes left for the class. And we had like 15 people. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, maybe was, we never had more than 20. I know that she, she capped it at 20, but I think we had at least 15 people in the room. And there is no way 15 people could do a share in 10 minutes. And it was so cozy. It was nighttime. We were sitting in a circle and the lights were kind of dim. And like there was lots of good spirits in the room. It was so beautiful. I remember we were all going around doing our share and everyone had enough time to share. We're all like just in this beautiful heart space, interconnected heart space. And everyone was like so open. It was almost like we were stepping into each other's experiences and sharing the experiences together. It was so beautiful. And then um, Kim was like the last person. You were sitting right next to our teacher and she did her share. As soon as you were done, it was like, we could feel like a spell ended or something, like, like something stopped. Like we came out of a, a, a mutual trance, a group mm -hmm. trance almost. And we looked at each other and we're like, we did it. We, everyone spoke in the 10 minutes and we're like, how did that happen? How, and then we all looked at Kim and he went, Kim, he went, that's me. I time bended. <laughs> it was so funny. But then what happened on the other side was like time sped up on yeah. us so which was really funny because everyone was calling everyone afterwards is it's like you're stretching a rubber band when you release it it kind of snaps back yep. so we all like everyone left and everyone got home in record time everyone's like normally it takes me 20 minutes to get home but it just took 10 minutes that's weird yeah it was an experiment i was just like let's see if i can bring everybody with me and it uh it worked that was so cool. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I've done it a few more times in different places and stuff like that. Just seeing what I, what, I, what works and what doesn't. Cause that's really the only way we find out mm -hmm. what, uh, what we're capable of. 
in different settings. Mm -hmm. It's just um, when you put so much intent, and I will use 2020 as an example, everybody wanted to get through 2020. So let's get through, let's just get through the year. Everything will be better. Let's go, go, go. <laughs> okay, um, for the record, I, I was not one of those people because <laughs> I knew what was waiting in 2021. <laughs> but everyone else was like, I just want to get through this year as fast as possible. Let's just get through it. Let's get through it. And um, that I think is why everything slowed down so harshly towards the end of the year because everyone just wanted to get through it so fast that there was a time correction. Mm. Yeah. Just I mean, October into November, everyone was like, one day feels like a week. You know, what do you do with this kind of a thing? <laughs> yeah, well, you, you got through everything else pretty quick. So, <laughs> so it's a correction. And you can't do anything with corrections. That's the bad thing. Not so much, but I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. So for all of you who are joining us, feel welcome to ask questions or post comments. Um, I'm Bonita. I'm here with Kim, the master of time, <laughs> time lord. <laughs> and um, one week from today, yeah. At what is it, 2 to 4 p.m., Kim will teach a class on time bending on my website, bonitawoods.org. It's super affordable and it is an amazing class. Today, we're talking a bit about if you're like time bending, I don't know what that is. Why would I want to take a class? I don't know. Um, today, we're going to talk about this and share some of our personal anecdotes. Um, is I, I studied this with Kim, what, five years ago? I don't know. Something six, like that. Five, yeah, a while right ago. About 15, 2015-ish. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I've been practicing it since then. It's been uh, very effective. But of course, since uh, we're each unique human beings, the work I end up going into more naturally is different from what Kim does. You know, just as I'm a chef, I specialize in nutritional food because that's what I do naturally. Someone else I worked with specializes in fine cuisine. Another person became a baker. Like, we all end up where we're naturally uh, in harmony with, uh, even though there's the same supportive platform. Uh, so, Kim, tell us a little bit about your relationship with time. It's a complicated one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. Um, so I heard about this type of technique probably, it was I've been over 10 years ago from somebody. And uh, I didn't think it was possible. Um, you just, you know, you can't move time, right? And, and that was my line of thinking at the time. And then I remember I was coming home and I was in Chicago and I was trying to get to LA. I, would, I had already been traveling probably close to 18, maybe 20 hours at this point, because um, I was coming from the other side of the world and I just wanted to get home to California. It was, you know, the summer, there's, you know, sun, there's the pool, you know. Uh -huh. um, and I thought about it and I was like, you know, and I, I gave it, I was like, well, let's see if this actually does work. Um, I was able to slow down time to slip through it. We arrived in uh, LAX 90 minutes before we were supposed to. <laughs> there was no tailwind and they didn't have a gate available for us to dock. So the, 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 uh, so you didn't sure. save yourself that much. <laughs> no, because we had to wait for a gate, which was still like 40 minutes. So if you're going to set yourself up like that, make sure you set everything up with the universe as there will be a gate ready. We'll be able to do this. And, uh, but it's still, it was, you know, record time kind of a thing. It was just one of those mm -hmm. things where it's like, okay, this, this has some, some merit. Let's start playing with it. Mm -hmm. And going forward, I started going forward and backwards. Um, I did forget to reset a time or two and you get stuck in whatever time direction you have left. <laughs> uh, we've all had it where it's like, God, this day feels like it's dragging forever, forever, forever. And, you know, did you reset when you slowed it down or, you know, things are flying. It's like, did you reset when you went forward? Because if we don't, you will stay there. Uh -huh. So, and it's, uh, yeah. yeah. 
You know what? I have a funny story about this. Um, back in the days when um, I had my wellness center, you know, I also had the gluten-free bakery and the mm -hmm. vegan food truck. And we also sold at farmer's markets. We had farmer's tables at at least one farmer's market every day of the week. So one day my head chef and I were working at a farmer's market and I was so bored. It was cold. It was a winter day and I knew that we had to go to a uh, festival afterwards at the DC Unitarian Church to do or to photograph people's auras all afternoon and evening. So I was like, I just wanted to get through the farmer's market. I was cold, I was cranky. And um, me, so I'm like trying to speed up time, right? I'm, I'm doing the technique you taught, I'm speeding up time. I'm, and it was like going really slow. And what I didn't realize was my head chef and my, our assistant, there was, were have, and my son was there, my youngest, the three of them were having so much fun. And they, I taught them the whole time technique from you. They were slowing down time because they were having so much fun. And they didn't <laughs> want to go to the festival and photograph auras. <laughs> so, Three to one. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and they kept saying, it's not slowing down enough. So they kept, because I was trying to speed it up and they were trying to slow it down. So they were slow, but they're like, it should be slower. They were playing like hacky sack and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> <It was> really... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we were like, finally, we uh, finally, I looked at him like, hey, what are you guys doing? And then we're like, what are you doing? We're all like, what? <laughs> you know, we're all doing the little hand things you taught us. <laughs> uh, oh, hi, everyone. So nice uh, for people to be uh, typing in your hellos. Kim, have you ever had a negative experience while time traveling? Not really. Um, the only negative I had is when I forgot to reset and I was stuck in either going slow or fast, depending upon which, what I had done. Um, I'm sorry. That's, I keep muting Facebook and it keeps speaking up. So I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> so, but here's the thing, time bending and time traveling while connected are not exactly the same. Right, right. So Can you talk about like your connection with time bending, which is more affecting the time here and now, or time traveling, which could also be to the past, to the future, or to alternative timelines. Like that's a powerful differentiation there. Yeah, um, time bending is for individual or groups where you currently are now. Um, when, you know, you've got 10 minutes to make it to the meeting and you need to slow it down enough. So you're going to bend time. Mm -hmm. um, you're not, you're not going to travel to a parallel universe in order to get there in time. You're actually going to do it right here, right now. It's kind of like you're going to either bake a cake in your kitchen or you're going to order from the bakery. That's a difference where the time bending is you're going to do it yourself right here, right locally. Mm -hmm. But traveling is an outside of that event because that's a whole that's a whole different burrito. <laughs> <It's> like, exactly. <laughs> um, All right. So we have another question. Can you reset after finding yourself stuck? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so one thing that I realize, um, like we all love our sleep, right? It's, you know, it's, it's freezing outside. You're nice and warm and it's 530. You're like, oh my God, I wish I had three more hours, right? So you slow time down because you want to sleep longer, right? Uh-huh. Well, if you slow time down, and many times as you slow it down, you need to reset that many times. Because if you slow it down three different times, because you can do it exponentially. That's the word I was looking for earlier. Oh, right, right. Um, you, you know, you're doing it. You're slowing it down. You're slowing it down. You're slowing it down. Ooh, well, like the shoulder reset, pad buildup of the 80s. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're, when you up to here and you do a reset you're if you do one you still have two so you have to make sure you do the equivalent of the reset of however many times you do the other because i've done that where i was like i need more sleep i just i need time to stop because i don't want to get out of bed right mm -hmm. you got to make sure you do the equal on both sides and i've done that where 
I've slowed it down so many times it wasn't paying attention. And I did a couple of resets and I was still like, why is it slow? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, we have a few more questions. Um, Nazi is asking, what is, the <laughs> what is the mechanic to initiate time bending? Uh, you got to take the class to learn that, Nazi. <laughs> Join us uh, this coming Saturday and you'll learn the mechanics. Um, is it merely a sense that is developed or is there more technical initiatives? Yeah, there's definitely some, I'd say both. Mm -hmm. That's not an either or, it's a both. Yeah, it's a both. And yeah. then it evolves over time too. Yeah. And then Kitty is asking, is there always a catch up? <laughs> when you slow down, is there always a period after where the time speeds up? Yes and no. Uh -huh. So it depends upon how long you do the effect. So if you forget, let's say, let's say you slow it down. Um, that's one of my favorites. Um, if you forget to reset it after a while, it has to catch up because it's an unnatural, and natural is not really a, the right word. The flow is not going correctly. So when you do reset it, then you slingshot the other way, kind of like the rubber band you were talking about earlier. It keeps going, 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 going. And when you finally do it, it just, it comes back. And then all of a sudden you woke up Tuesday and now it's Friday, right? It just, I've had that, that too, where you just, you don't, it doesn't seem like there's enough time in the day. You just don't know where the day went. You know, you just woke right. up, right? You know? Um, so yeah, it, it can happen. It can go either direction too. Mm -hmm. So, but it, um, yeah, so whenever you whenever you play with it, you got to make sure you reset it when you're done, because you know. And that that took me a few. Yeah, it had happened to me quite a bit, and then now it's like, oh, I did this. Let me reset it really quick. <laughs> um, and then there's times where the universe will just not let you move either direction. Um, like I said, I, I was stuck in a two month period of slow. I got a lot of stuff done, um, a lot of reading, a lot of healing, a lot of of new stuff and research. I mean, it was definitely beneficial for me, um, but it was also driving me crazy because it's just like, you know, the 24 hour day was more like 36 hour day, you know, for two months, but um, mm -hmm. now time is starting to, to come back a little more normal. Yeah, but you did get a lot done then. <laughs> Talking with you was like, <laughs> you did what? <laughs> I went for a walk and you did what? <laughs> I was taking advantage of what I had. Yeah, I was like, oh, we gotta go. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you do this, is time changed for everyone in the world? Mm. That would be big. No, if like when I did it with the group, my intent was to take the group with me along, mm. you know, to make time slow. So we all had a moment for everybody to be able to share. Um, and that was the other thing too. I actually put a time on it when we finished that it would it would reset and go away. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I, I wouldn't even try to do the world because, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean that would be a Dalai Lama level action. <laughs> but then, but then you get in, you know, to the 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 flow of everybody and the and the free will issue, and then you're forcing, you know, your energy on somebody who may like their time where it is right now and just always has so mm -hmm. i did notice um one time at a farmer's market because you know back in the day when we sold our products at farmer's markets it was hit or miss you never knew what kind of business you would get from one day to the next um and so one time we were there and it was dead and everyone was bored and so, you know, like then the vendors were all going and swapping with each other. Okay, I have products, you have products, you know, let's trade with each other. So at least we all went home with a bunch of good stuff and we're kind of hanging out, but we were really, really bored. So uh, my team and I did some time bending to like speed up time so that we could get to the, and we, we set the parameter of, you know, speed up time to get quick, move quickly to, you know, the time we wanted to get out. And what I noticed was the people that we had been hanging out with who were all like super bored, all of them were like, oh my God, it took forever to get to 11, but we hit 3 p.m. so fast, thank God. <laughs> so we did affect other people, but only the ones that were energetically like wishing the same thing we were wishing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
maybe that's part of it too. And plus, they were, you were also interacting with them and everybody was having the same feeling. So maybe it was one of those, their higher self was like, hey, look over here. They're doing it. <laughs> Let's just go join them, you know? Mm -hmm. But it, you yeah. weren't like, I'm taking you. So. No, no, I was, we were just doing it for us. And then it just kind of affected. Everybody went with it. Yeah, not everyone, but just the ones that, that we were like connected with. Um, I do want to mention a few side effects like I have uh, of playing with time. Um, I have used your techniques in coordination with other techniques that I've learned. So one time I was in Colorado, flying back from Colorado to Washington, D.C., or Dulles Airport in Virginia. Um, I had been working with an angelic healer. She works a lot with like gold and angels. Her angels had gold and white light to them. And I was working with uh, Garrett Duncan, the featherway shaman. And Garrett had taught us a technique where you create an energetic feather in running along from the front of the cockpit to the back of the cockpit with the feather strands, you know, going backwards energize and he said that helps you get safely and quickly to where you're going uh, his process was comparable to time bending but using featherway shamanic techniques and um and the prana shakti you know so i combined some of the prana shakti i practice and then my angelic friend said i'm sending my angels with you you know she went with me to the airport and she said i'm sending my angels with you to surround your airplane to make sure that it's safe and protected, you'll get safely and quickly to where you, you know, to your destination. And I filled the inside of the plane with prana shock. So I had Garrett's golden energy feather, golden white angels, prana shakti. And the pilot said, okay, we're going into a headwind. So we're going to arrive late. And we ended up arriving 40 minutes early. We didn't have to wait for a gateway. We got there. The pilot said, folks, I don't know how we did it, but we got here. We're not late. We're not on time. We're early. <laughs> he was really excited. He said, he, and he was, it was like unusual enough that he spoke about it to everyone in the cabin. I'm like, yep. Yeah, thank you. Time bending. Thank you. Like all of this <laughs> together. I felt very safe and comfortable the whole trip. Um, yeah, so the time bending, that, that was the first time I realized time bending can be mixed with other, uh, because I had then four modalities working together. Absolutely. It's, um, everybody does it a little bit different, but once you get the basic concept, you know, use it however, you know, you can use it with, with uh, Reiki, with um, um, the shaman that you were talking about. I mean, it's energy, it's intent. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the biggest thing. And everything we do is with an energy and intent. It's just a matter of how to kind of focus in on to get what you want to get done. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, yeah, I've, I've been finding it that a lot of things are, everything is extremely connected and it's really weird how we separate these things out. Um, you know, like, you know, you have time bending and you have time travel where well, they're, they're cousins and they're just a little bit different because when time bending is you're doing it with the current local and time bending is where do you want to go today? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah and that, that's another thing I wanted to mention. When I studied time bending with you, I started seeing moments into the linear future. You know, I've told you before about the time when I was driving and I was coming up to a T-junction and I saw the lights of a police car had pulled someone over. Mm -hmm. And then I got there and there's no police car anywhere. I'm like, that's weird. I saw those lights from a block and a half back or from two blocks back. So then I turned right, turned left, drove a couple of blocks to do the errand, came back a few minutes later and there was a cop car had pulled someone over right where I had seen it. So I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I saw it before it happened. But then there was another time, like I, my youngest and I were walking down the street going to a playground and I saw him trip and 
face plant. I went running over there as any, you know, mother would panicked. And just as I got there, he tripped. And instead of face planting into the asphalt, he fell into my arms. I caught him. Wow. So what I saw was like five seconds into the future before it happened. And That's I was like, nice side effect. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was, it was almost like looking at time, ref, you know, like expanded out. So I was seeing the outer perimeter of the action before the physical action. In both those occasions, I think. I'm gonna have to start looking at that because I never, one, I never thought about it. And, you know, I see so many things that it's just, okay, I just write it off and just keep going because it's just like, you know, are they there or are they not, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a question. What realm is time bending part of? Not shamanism, not angelic, not mediumship. Is it a higher level discipline? <laughs> what higher is there a higher level discipline it's a part of um it's universal an, yeah it's an element I, it's a dimension i guess it's all of the above because i mean it's in so time is is a, a man-made construction of because they had to do something to like math you need to count right mm -hmm. so they needed to do something with the day and the night and so they had to come up with some idea and they came up with time uh it, time doesn't exist really anywhere else but here yeah so it's i have to think on it because i and, and and have a chat um because i really i don't have an answer for it at the moment yeah. but uh i'll see if i can have come one up in the next couple of days because that's a good question yeah it's one of those weird ones like never thought of it yeah Definitely we'll look into it because now I want to know because it's like, well, what is it part of? It's really not part of this or not part of that. So uh, the librarians, when they show me how they see time, it's more of a multi-dimensional mosaic of moving pieces. And um, when they show me how they see the way we view time, you know those like hedgerow mazes? where all you see is like a hedge on your left and right, and you're like walking through and going, trying to find your way from one end to another. They feel like we put these like walls around specific mm -hmm. avenues to time, not the best avenues. <laughs> like we, the whole terrain is open to us and we put a hedgerow maze on top of it so that we have to go this way or that. Uh, that's kind of how they show it to me. They don't show it as a hedgerow maze. They just show big black walls, but it's the same thing. Yeah, it's the, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have, but you actually do have time. It's just, it's a, it's a falseness. There is time for everything. Um, you just have to make it. That's the weird thing. It's kind of hard to, I, I still have problems in my head getting around it. Trust me. It's just like, how do I make time to have time? It's, okay. <laughs> Let's just stretch this out and see how it goes. <laughs> so, yeah, it's still, yeah. It's one of those things. I still scratch my head every day. <laughs> so here's a question that I just thought of. So you know how people are always saying, I don't have enough time. And people are always saying, I don't have enough money. And people say time is money. Mm -hmm. So can we do time bending and money bending at the same time? Man, they're both manifestation. Mm -hmm. So yes, I haven't figured out how to do it, but I'm gonna start working on that because it'd be like, oh, okay, how do we do this? Cause you know, yeah, uh, mama needs new carpet. <laughs> it's like, so it's like hmm, how do we make this happen <laughs> i yeah, think that would be fun yeah it's but it's all manifestation and it's all intent and and it's direction of intent and i think um oh okay so when we do time bending we do it with intent with clarity but when we do other things our intent isn't so clear mm -hmm. and we we put 
limitations on it, things that spirit or the universe doesn't understand, mm-hmm. like contractions or the word can't. <laughs> the universe doesn't understand can't <laughs> or if. <laughs> you know, <I'm> just, <laughs> so there's certain things that it just doesn't understand. So if we give it the wrong parameters, it's going to hear the next word. And mm-hmm. that's what it's going to give you. And then you're like, wait a minute, I didn't quite ask for this. Well, they didn't understand this. <laughs> so yeah. wait, I said, I don't want to get in trouble. Why am I in trouble? <laughs> right. All they heard was get into trouble. I want to get into trouble. Yes. The word don't. Yeah. You always yeah. have to phrase things very positively, very directly. Exactly. And then yeah. that also comes down to, um, with it when you do the intent for um time travel if you know you will be skeptical because with anything we start to do we are skeptical that it, that's just the way humans are um but give yourself enough belief in yourself to do it mm-hmm. because if 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 you don't then you know you're gonna be like well see this doesn't work well okay but you, you know you have you have to I still have doubts and I still, you know, I do it. And I still like, do you really just do this? So, you know, it's just, because some days it seems so far out of reality to be able to, that you're still like, you know, it's just a sci-fi movie or, you know, did I, what did I do? Um, but yeah, a lot of it's intent. And then also whatever you do, you have to do it the same every time. And then you'll start honing a skill to the point of you can do it completely different or the same. It all depends, but you have to make sure you do it the same every time. Yeah. Sorry, I went off. Yeah. No, I like that. I like that. And I'm thinking like for me, time is not really much of a, an emotional factor, you mm-hmm. know, like now, later, especially in the COVID era. Like now time has lost all meaning. What day is it? I don't know. <laughs> you know, what time is it? I don't know. But money has a lot of emotional impact. So if I, it's easy for me to play with time because it has no, like whatever happens, I don't care. It's all fun. So if I start like messing with time and money together, It'll take away some of that emotional connection to money and put it in the fun category. Yeah. Yeah. I can do that. I'm going to, between now and Saturday, next Saturday, when you teach your class, I'm going to mess around with that and see what happens. Okay. Yeah. Let me know. Cause I'm interested. Cause I'm, I'm thinking, how can I do this? I've already, <laughs> I've already got things running in my head. Or we can do this, we can do this. Cause that's the other thing too, is if you have a very strong emotional reaction to something that you want to do mm-hmm. good or bad maybe you shouldn't do it because it's going to be the intent isn't going to be pure so to speak there, mm-hmm. there's a motive behind it and whenever we do things in, with intention with the motive behind it good or bad it doesn't always work um so you know you got you got to be careful because if it's misunderstood on the other side, <laughs> it, <laughs> it comes back around. You're like, this is not what I asked for. Like, here's a really good one. This happened to me back in a really long time ago. <laughs> I had a, a new truck. It was a Chevy S10 custom paint job. Loved the car. Had a V6. But I wanted a 4x4. Four four. <laughs> and I was like, I really want a 4x4. Four four. I love this truck, but I really want a 4x4. Four four. I really want a 4x4. Four four. I didn't complete the thought, okay? Uh Uh-oh. So the universe said, you want a four by four? They took a van into the side of the truck and totaled my truck, right? I was fine, just little bumps and bruises. I lost my truck. They're like, well, you can go get a four by four. Well, you know, insurance with, you know, upside down, this and this, couldn't get a four by four. But I only went halfway with what my desire was. Mm. So- you have to make sure it's a complete, I, I want, I want a four by four. I want, you know, I want to be able to pay for it in cash or, you know, whatever the case is, trade this in, get that, whatever. If you give it yeah. hat, kind of like with time travel, if you do a half thought, Oh, I really would like to go look at the civil war. Right. But you don't explain how 
or you want to, you know, you're going to show up in the middle of civil war going, oh, damn. You know, it's like, I didn't want to be a soldier in the middle right? of the battlefield. Yeah, exactly. You know, so that's when, you know, it's examples kind of a thing. So mm-hmm. when, when you start doing intent with anything, make sure you go through and go, you know, make sure you kind of plan it out because that will definitely help with um, ensuring that you actually get where you want to go. You know, and time when I when I slow things down, it's like yeah, I I start putting timers on them now, until I complete this project or this book or getting wherever I'm going, because I do forget to reset. So mm-hmm. I started doing that, and that has helped me immensely. You know, so. In the- yeah, yeah. Yesterday, I um, after getting all that work done, it was a lot of work for one hour. I got to say, that was a lot of sophisticated work for one hour. Afterwards, um, I went back to the same space, my room. I said, I deserve a break. And I watched a 20-minute comedy show on Hulu. An hour went by. Nice. In 20 minutes for me, an hour went by. And then I'm like, what happened? Now I have to get dinner together. Oh, my God. How did that happen? (laughs) yeah but that was some that was really um you know quite the reset (laughs) of the episode it ran straight through to the end 22 minutes of time but the clock went from like 350 to 442 something like Uh that so you you went the other direction yeah yeah it, it went it like because it gave me so much time it took a little back but it was really something because I was you know 22 minutes that's you know you can't get around that but it was almost a full hour (laughs) well the universe will do what the universe wants Mm -hmm. and there's times I've tried to do things in the universe nope time's going to stay right where it's at this is where you're going to be it's like okay and that's when you just stop because it, it won't, no matter how much you put into it, you're just spinning your wheels because the universe is not going to comply. Exactly. Like for the students who just finished my uh, month long manifestation intensive class, the one thing we learned is you cannot force a manifestation. Correct. You can try to manifest a healthy, dynamic, loving, productive, Washington DC, but you would then be going against a lot of free wills that don't want that. You cannot force it. Yep. And yeah, so I assume it's the same for time that you can't force time against its natural will. If it if it doesn't want to, yep. Because maybe there's something that that's something too. If you're meant to go through something good or bad, time will not let you move it because you need to go through it at the pace that it's at. I've also noticed that. Mm -hmm. I had a few instances where it's just like, I just want to get through this because this shit, you know, like the pain in the leg, let's go fast forward. Let's get through this because done it before. And I had to live each day with it. And it just, once I got to a certain point, then I was able to move time in the direction I wanted to go. But okay. so there's some things that time you have to go through and it's, um, yeah, that's one yeah. of the things that I don't care about, but you know, I didn't make the rules. I just have to live by them. So right. <laughs> yeah, what was it a, a couple of weeks ago, I had a chat on the phone with one of my students who was saying, okay, Benita, once I know I'm in alignment with my divinity, then I'll always find the perfect parking spot. Traffic will always move with me and Greek traffic lights will always be green. I'm like, well, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> but if you are in alignment with your divinity, no matter what happens, you will be in a gracious, grateful space. And so when I hit the green lights, I, I said, I do get more green lights than I used to, or maybe I'm more aware of them because I'm filled with gratitude. Oh, look, a green light. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. But when I reach a red light, I say, oh, look, a red light. I get to relax and have a moment for myself. You know, I'm grateful for that. 
I think it's a trained habit that we think of red lights as bad. I think of red lights as me time. So um, I said, so when you're in alignment with your higher grace, you are grateful for what comes forward. And then I had to hop in the car and go to Trader Joe's. And I put it out there. I just want to get there quickly, achieve everything I need to achieve, and get back in good time so that I can sanitize everything and then go on with stuff I'd much rather do. <laughs> so I'm driving there and I'm every single light red and <laughs> traffic everywhere. It was just like really slow getting there. I'm like, okay. Put the, put the action where the lesson was. You know, I just talked about this. I'm just going to be gracious and grateful. And, and I had told her sometimes you get slowed down for a reason. I don't know. So I turned onto a side road, which I normally do. I take back roads. And all these cars are coming. So I couldn't turn left down the road I wanted to unless I wanted to wait a long time. So I went the next road. And all these cars are coming. But I could tell it was a quicker turn. So I turned and then there's a school bus and I pulled over to let the school bus go because, you know, I'm a good person. And then there's someone who had to do a three point turn and it took them a bunch. It looks like a parent trying to chase the school bus. <laughs> and I let them go and they waved. I mean, they were very grateful. And I'm like, okay, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. You know, I'm full of grace. <laughs> and then I went going and at that very moment, some turkey buzzards flew right overhead. They circled a few loops over my car and then they drove in front of me for the next like three or four blocks. So turkey buzzards are my animal totems. They have been my animal mentors since I was born. I always feel extra blessed when I see them. You know, I like the stories I have and you know with the quarantine I haven't been going out hiking with my vulture buddies so there I was driving for like I don't know quarter mile a half I guess like a half mile with turkey buzzards guiding my way I was like you see there was a reason if my focus had been on I'm blessed if I get green lights I would have missed out on the whole purpose for that which was to make sure I was in the right time at the right place to have this experience that would fill me with great joy. And if I was in a bad mood, I would not have looked up to see my beloved turkey buzzards, or they might have sensed the bad energy and just kept flying. <laughs> you know, that brings up a good point. When you do manipulate or time bend, um, you're not, oh, you don't always see all the stuff around you per se, the small detail things, right? You'll see that you'll see the car, right? Coming through the light, but you won't see the turkey buzzers flying or stuff like that because time is moving differently. So you'll see what you need to, to stay safe, but the other, the other smaller things you won't. I've done these, that's I've noticed. I haven't seen when I'm, you know, doing that with time. So it's more right in your vicinity. So, yes. Yeah, that's true. And it's like your your energy will connect with what you're open to connect with. Yeah. I think there was a frantic parent who probably had a kid get on the bus and then realized the kid left something in the car and they were chasing after. I'm filled with gratitude that I helped that parent lower their stresses that little bit, you know, to not have to wait for me to drive past, which would have been my technical right, you know. Like everything that happened filled me with gratitude and my gratitude, I think energetically, my animal friends were drawn to my energy. It was the perfect time and place that allowed this to happen. But no matter how perfect it could have been in alignment, my attitude could have thrown the whole thing out of whack. Yep. Yeah. So we have, <laughs> okay. Uh, who is the real master then? The human collective who initiated time when you say the universe will not budge? Uh, so. <laughs> I'm going universe. <laughs> I love these questions. Such goodies, Kim. I'm going universe. <laughs> the, the universe makes the ultimate what's going to happen. Um, you know, we, we can play with it. We can do all kinds of things. We can travel. Um, we can see future backsides, 
alternate universes, parallels and all this, but when it comes down to it, the universe, whoever's in charge up there makes the ultimate decision. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I've seen it do enough where I haven't done anything that I know somebody else is in charge of it because it's like, I didn't do that, you know? <laughs> Uh, maybe subconsciously, but I'm going to go with no, but, uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, the, the universe. Yeah, I think the human collective, you know, when we're outside of 3D life, we're very masterful because we're able to see from a higher perspective. We know that time doesn't really exist. But when we come into life, we're not masterful. We're messing time up. We're like putting it in cages. <laughs> Yeah, no, we're, um, we're definitely, we can influence, we can influence a lot, but the influence can be stopped if they want to. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of weird, at least from, at least from all the experiences that I've ever had, that it comes down to is yes, you can do this, but if we say no, then no. Mm -hmm. So there's a time I actually thought I broke my time bending. Hoochie hoochie. I don't know what to call it because I couldn't go forward or backwards. It just, it wasn't working. And then all of a sudden one day it just started working again. I'm like, okay, I needed to be in this space for this reason, whatever, you know? So, um, yeah, it happens. It happens to everybody. <laughs> so definitely the universe. Yeah. And I do want to ask, um, wait here, based on librarians telling us the concept of time was created by the human collective. Um, yes, you're right. The librarians said, we created linear time, not time. Right. We're the ones that took this wonderful, wild beast and put it, you know, with chains and said, you can only go forward. So uh, linear time is a human creation. And um, <laughs> we're cracking Mariam up. <laughs> <laughs> but they see time as much more free form and can go in many it's only one element out of many so they see it as you know coming back to the chef one ingredient in a recipe you know one of my favorite stories about human um doing linear time is the god maui um he lasted so maui the people came to, to Maui and said, we need the, t the sun to slow down because we need it to grow our crops, to feed our kids, to be, you know, to be able to do stuff. So Maui went to the sun god and said, hey, can you slow time? Can you slow down going across the horizon? You know, the people need it for this. And the sun refused to listen. Maui asked him one more time. And the sun god said, no. So then Maui created a lasso. And when the sun came up, he lassoed the sun and held it and forced him to make an agreement to slow down, to go across the horizon um, over a period of linear time to allow them to, um, to be able to grow their crops and to fish and, you know, with some type of daylight instead of, you know, very short period. Um, there are stories like that all through history about how man made linear time. They're all different ones, but yeah, that's my favorite. It's a Hawaiian. I like one. that. Yeah. And, um, Kat said, maybe when you lost your time skill, it was a way to teach those who don't know how, since you had to figure out how to get it working again. Oh, yeah. I, as a matter of fact, I did make a, an adjustment on something. So maybe that was, yeah, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, they could always send just a mail saying, hey, we're going to do this. We, you know, we're going to turn your power off. Make sure you're ready. <laughs> Uh, but I think there is something to be said for um, for get if you're like because like being able to do any of this work, it's a matter of being in harmony with it, you know. Like mm -hmm. to a point, I, yeah. Like last summer, I had a number of very divine friends who told me they couldn't go onto my social media for a little while because I was uh, doing the Voices of Freedom series and we were talking about what Black Lives Matter and I was bringing a number of experts, which um, was, I felt like it was an important thing to do to share this uh, knowledge and understanding. 
And I had friends who said, okay, normally I love to follow you right now. I can't because I cannot let politics connect with me at all because I need to maintain a certain frequency for healing the planet. I need to stay in a higher space and anything about politics brings me down and then I can't do my work. Um, and then once, you know, they didn't disconnect from me. They just had to not, they weren't talking to anyone because they felt like as we were dealing with this, it was important for them to go even higher to send healing energy down. And if they got out of that frequency, they felt like they couldn't accomplish anything. So I, that really started me thinking about how whatever work we do, we need to be in alignment with it, in frequency and harmony with it. And if there's ha things happening in our life that take us out of harmony, and I just want to say, like for anyone, don't go bashing my very divine friends. <laughs> they were working really, really hard at healing the planet. And they knew what they had to have to maintain that frequency. And most of the ones I'm mentioning were black and brown friends of very, very, very divine who normally lived fairly isolated lives <laughs> just so they could do this. But you know, I wonder, you know, as we, as we grow in life, our frequency is growing and changing and evolving. That's just the nature of living life. Do you feel there's been times in your life where you've had to reharmonize and reconnect on new levels? Yeah, just for the, the part of uh, healing. And then when you heal, there's an evolution involved. And then the spirit and the frequency hopefully raise. <laughs> hopefully it doesn't stay the same. Um, and then, yeah, that's, and then you learn um, different connections. Like, remember I was telling you about one of my ways that I connect with the collective was the tunnel at night. And then that stopped a few days ago. And I was like, okay, what's going on? You know, but I think it was because I was ready to learn the, a different way of connecting, mm -hmm. which I was talking uh, with a friend of mine about it. And it's like, okay. And then the other night connected through a completely different way that I've never done before. It's just like, oh, this is how this works. Okay, now I got, you know, I have two ways to do this, right? <laughs> um, and the new way is much more efficient than the old way, I, you know, but I can still use that. But that's like um, when you first learn your first steps, when you're, you know, the, you're a lower frequency, but you can still connect. It's just, it's harder because it has more uh, uh, human in it, if that makes any sense. And so, um, yeah, so I have two different ways to connect now. One's, one's like the old BOD modems and the new one is like the ESL, right? Uh, so I'm looking forward to the farm fiber upgrade. Um, but yeah, it just, yeah, as you evolve, everything evolves. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you do evolve, some of what you used to be able to do no longer works. So then you have to figure out a new way, which, like that the person pointed out, it's like, oh yeah, I do connect differently now when I, when I go forward or backwards. And that was direct result for me not being able to, because I had something had changed and I didn't, maybe I, I probably wasn't paying attention that they were telling me it was coming because mm -hmm. it's definitely changed and evolved. When I first started, when I first taught those classes, you know, a few years ago, it's definitely completely different how I connect. So, you know, but the base will be there to say, okay, this, you know, here's the mechanics to start, you know, and then go from there, you know, because everybody's right. different. Everybody connects differently. Everybody, you know, sees things differently. I mean, I learned some from the students that were in that class. They told me how they kind of connect things or like you were telling me, it's just like, I need this much time, make it happen. All right. It's like, oh, you just asking, okay, that, that's different, right? So there's, there's no one way. It's whatever way works best for you, but it's basically this is this is how we do it, how we can make it happen, and then yes. hopefully bring the plan along with us. It, oh, that would be great. <laughs> so, see, as you evolve, your means of travel also evolves. Oh, and uh, Kitty wants to know how did you get into time bending? <laughs> Selfishness, actually. No, like I said, um, way back when the. The first what eight minutes when we were just talking to ourselves um somebody had shared with me about time bending um about 10 11 years ago 
And um, I was like, okay, I really didn't give it much credence because I just kind of thought, eh, you know, uh, yeah. It, <laughs> uh, I didn't think it was really possible, right? I think it was sci-fi, that kind of stuff. And then I was on a plane and I'd already been traveling about 18, 20 hours-ish at this point. And I just wanted to get home to Los Angeles and I was in Chicago. So we took off and, um, I, you know, spent time to get us there quickly. We came in 90 minutes early. There was no gate available, um, you know, no tailwind either. We just, we arrived early and we had to wait like 40 minutes for a gate. Um, but that's when I realized that there's something to this and let's see how, you know, and I started working with it more and more. And then, you know, by the time I did your wellness class, I think I've been doing it for about four years on or off. And, uh, and I've been doing a lot more, you know, since that class, because it's, it's a great tool to have when you need things. But like I said, if the universe wants you to go through something, it's not going to let you move time either direction because it wants you to be in the moment, which is, you know, part of it too, which is great when you can move things fast or slower. But part of the reason being human is to have the human experience. And the part of the human experience is being in the moment, mm -hmm. which 2020 was trying to show you in a very hurtful way because <laughs> I don't know what other way to put it um but you know be in the moment with yourself because I learned that the two months that I had the time slow is you know at first it's like what is going on I was angry I was upset and then I realized like well I'll make the best of it let's start moving it and it still was weeks before it let up mm -hmm. you know looking back I'm grateful I had the time I used most of it wisely <laughs> Um, so yeah, it, uh, yeah, but that's what got me into uh, to time bending was, was I wanted to get home quicker. And so it was selfish. <laughs> it was straight up. Well, selfish is not bad. Selfish is yeah. taking care of self. Yeah. Well, I took the whole plane with me too. So, you know, it wasn't just me showing up. I was like the other hundred or whatever on the plane, they went with me too. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, but that's, that's how it all started. <laughs> And um, I do have to mention, like, when I had my wellness center, uh, we had each month, aside from, like, the practitioners and the cafe, we, um, you know, and the doctors, the acupuncturists, like, the whole healing team who worked there, we also had 30 to 40 classes and events each month. Um, and um, Kim's, for years... Kim's time bending class was far and away the most requested return class of all the classes we had. We had a lot of classes and of all the classes, Kim taught time bending. That's the one class that people have asked more than any other class to bring back. So I'm so thrilled we are. Me too. I'm looking forward to it. Yes. Where this takes people, because that's one of the things I love is when I hear stories from people when they use it and, you know, it just uh, you could see it on their faces like I did this and, you know, normally it takes me half an hour and it's like five minutes, boom. And it's just, you know, that kind of stuff. It's just, it works. Mm -hmm. And then some of the skills I picked up because I studied with you on time bending is uh, visiting alternative timelines, mm -hmm. seeing what I'm doing in more radiant or other timelines at the moment, which is interesting and fun. And this is something that I know Kim also does. So. Jumping, yeah. yes. <laughs> I'm going to go visit my uh, ashrarium later and see where, uh, go look at some things. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the other thing when, um, when you start bending time, um, frequently. Um, I've noticed the more I started doing it, the more timeline jumping I started doing, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, one way th to look at it is everyone's heard of the uh, Mandela effect. I had to stop and think about that. <laughs> Mandela, the Nelson uh, yeah. Mandela effect. Yes. Yeah. Um, I remember him passing away in jail in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people who do, but there's a lot of people who say, no, he got out. He did all this wonderful stuff. And I Googled him and saw he did all this wonderful stuff. Oh, yeah. 
Um, yeah. So, you know, that's that's an, uh, a side effect you can get. And, hope, you know, so far, every time I have moved, it has been for the betterment of me. Mm -hmm. I haven't gotten any anything negative. So um, that could be a possible side effect, which is a whole other topic and conversation. <laughs> but uh, yeah. good stuff with it. Well, I think once you learn bending time, you're like opening yourself up to push away those two walls that the librarians say we bracket ourselves with. And as you push them away, you see a little more and a little more. Yes. You know, you open up to see time the way others do. Yes. 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 Yeah. Well, you guys, it is uh, time. <laughs> for us to say our farewell. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. And uh, if you haven't already signed up for Kim's class on Sunday, February 20th, all right, that's going to be like the most fun two hours you could imagine, or five hours, depending on how much we fill the class. <laughs> let's, let's see what we're going to do. <laughs> uh, so have a wonderful week, and I hope that we'll see you. Um, I put the link in the comments and in the description for today's live stream if you want to go check it out. And if you're not sure, there's a couple of videos in there also of Kim talking about time bending. If you want to hear more about it <laughs> for Tuesday or before uh, next Saturday, the 20th. Have a wonderful day, everyone. And, um, uh, you know, if you have more questions, feel welcome to post them in the comments. All right, guys. Have a good day. And thank you for dropping by. Bye.